Now once you've unboxed your M2, installed the spool holder, and connected your power supply, you're ready to get started with the Quick Start app. The message shown here serves as a reminder for these preliminary steps before getting started. While our Mac and Linux users will be able to get started right away, if you are using Windows, the first thing you have to do is install the proper driver. Now this is the window you'll see if you access the Quick Start app using Windows. Now, when you click Connect to M2, a window will pop up showing the different communication ports. You're going to want to select the one that corresponds to your USB port. After successfully connecting your M2 and your computer, you're going to want to click Next. Now this takes us to step 2. During this stage, we'll be checking the starting height and ensuring that our bed is level. Now as soon as you click Begin Checking Starting Height, you will see your nozzle move as well as your heated build platform. It's going to raise up to uh, decrease the distance to just a few millimeters so that the nozzle is almost touching the bed. Now at this point you're going to want to get your feeler gauge which is included with your M2. Using the bed height controls you will move your bed upwards toward the nozzle first in one millimeter then 0.1 millimeter and then 0.01 millimeter increments until you're just experiencing slight resistance. Now watch here as I use my feeler gauge to quite literally gauge the distance between the bed and nozzle. As I mentioned, slight resistance is your goal here. I went too far and so I bring it back down and then bring it back up in a smaller increment until I feel slight resistance. Can't stress that enough. Now, once we've determined that uh, there is a proper distance between our nozzle and our bed, we can click Begin Checking Bed Level. At this point, you'll see your bed lower slightly, and your nozzle will move to one of the corners. Now we're going to do the same procedure here on all four corners as we just did in the middle of the bed during the check starting height phase. As you can see again, I'm raising the bed up as I'm using my feeler gauge to uh, test the level of resistance. Again, I've gone too far, so I lower it again and then raise it in smaller increments until I feel just a little bit of resistance. As soon as that corner is complete, I click Next Corner, and voila! Now you'll follow the same exact procedure using the bed height buttons and your feeler gauge along all four corners of the build platform until it is approximately level. After following this procedure along all four corners, you're going to again do the same thing, except with one slight difference this time, as shown in the instructions in the app. As my screenshot shows, the difference here is that you'll also be using your 2mm Allen key in combination with the bed height controls. Follow the instructions provided by the app very carefully as it will tell you whether to use the bed height controls or the Allen key to align the particular corner that you're working on with all the other corners. Keep in mind that although we are now using the 2mm Allen key in addition to the bed height controls to align each corner, we are still using the feeler gauge to determine that we've reached the correct position. After leveling the final corner, you're going to see that this button changes to save starting height. Don't click it just yet. You're going to want to wait for your bed to lower and then raise up again until the nozzle is nearly touching the bed. You can use your feeler gauge again to verify that this is at the correct position. Once you've done so, you can then click save starting height. For step 3, the first thing you want to do is heat your build platform as well as your extruder. These temperature settings are configured for PLA, which is the same material that's included with your M2. If you navigate to the Print tab, you'll notice that your filament must be loaded into your extruder before printing. So we'll begin loading filament as soon as the extruder has reached the proper temperature. So now that I've got my spool of black PLA, I grab the tip so that it is pointing upwards. Now I'm going to cut the tip of my filament so that it is flat. This is very important to ensure that it loads properly into the filament drive and eventually into the extruder. Now mounting the spool and feeding the tip through the uh, filament guide. Now it's coming upwards. 
Now I'm going to get my filament guide tube. It's made of clear plastic so you can't see it too well here, but it comes included with your M2, so no worries there. Now once you feed it all the way through, it's going to form almost like a rainbow shape to, come, to bow up and come back down toward um, your filament drive. Now this is a perfect time to do this because we're waiting for our build platform as well as our extruder to heat up. Once it's up to temperature, we can place the filament into the little hole here in the filament drive. Now applying just a slight amount of pressure, I'm going to click extrude 50 millimeters. You can see that my fans are rotated. I've done this only so you can see the filament drive and there's no reason that you should do the same. Now I'm just helping the filament make its way into the filament drive with gentle pressure. But once the filament drive grabs onto the filament, it'll do the rest of the work from there. And if you're at the proper temperature, you'll see filament extruding out the end of the nozzle. Now you see some curling here. Don't worry, that's normal. After properly extruding filament, select bracelet.g as the file you want to print. Then click prepare to print. At this point, simply click Print Now in order to bring your designs to life. Mm -hmm.